for today's cup of coffee with Scream. Cup of coffee with Scream. Actually, recording this earlier than we normally record. This yeah. is on uh, August the seventeenth, twenty twenty four. Uh-huh. Been listening to a video of nineties Euro dance music, and it's been awesome. It has been. That and we had watched the Blue Man Group react to um, Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. Mm-hmm. The and Blue Man Group always gives me joy. They just. They got a good energy, a good they do. vibe. They're wonderful. But they played the, uh, the drums to it at first, and then they did the full on thing yeah. with the Black Parade. Yeah, and I mean, it's just they they took performance art and percussion to the next level. Yeah, and I'm sure that they have inspired countless numbers of people. Oh yeah, I mean, just incredible, incredible things. Why is it every time we record, they decide to go? buy the house and because it's bullshit. daylight this is why we usually record later in the evening that's why that's why potatoes potatoes in the i don't place. think that's why because they do that at night well that's true occasionally they do some people are just loud we're not <laughs> not usually we can be but not you know me yelling things at the cats such as just eat that spider <laughs> Eat it. It's right there. Right there. Things you hear from our porch. Yeah. Not quite like other people's porches. We're going to do part two. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> part, Echoing through the holler. Uh, part two of 70s horror movies. I enjoy going down memory lane as far as movies that I have seen. Hopefully uh-huh. inspire other people. It's like, oh, yeah, I did watch that. Hey, I would like to watch that. Just fun stuff. So we did the first 50, and this um, list came from Rotten Tomatoes. I did put the link in the description box there yesterday if somebody wants to go back. And it's like, which one did they mention? Well, I'll put the link there for you so you can go back and if you want to do a little more uh, research into it. And the first two that came up as far as number 51, 52, I don't remember either one of them. 1976, The Tenant. Bogus Pinted? And this was a Roman Polanski, which I'm not necessarily a fan of. But anyhow. Who? (laughs) And uh, so that one you can look into. The other one was The Witch Who Came from the Sea from 1975. Oh. Now that one actually sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. But it's like the synopsis was... Anger stemming from being abused as a child drives an alcoholic's daughter to kill as an adult. Well, that's lovely. Isn't it, though? That does... I I mean, yeah, I guess... That makes a wonderful, relaxing watch. (sighs) That's not a fun spoopy. No. Uh, That's where you go back to even way back with Bella Lugosi. Yeah. Bella Lugosi, and you had Lon Chaney, Lon Chaney Jr., all those wonderful people. Loves it. Now, number 53 on this list from 1978, this one freaked me out totally. It's called Coma. Never seen it. And, And it was directed by Michael Crichton, and he did some really good stuff. But this was where they had this whole underground thing. And people would go in for medical procedures, and they would suspiciously go into a coma. And this underground Hmm. thing, they were suspended. And I can't remember if they were doing organ harvesting or something like that, but it was freaky. Oh, shit. Yeah, it truly was a horror movie. So I I do recommend that one. I need to go back and rewatch that one. And maybe not. Um, (laughs) I think there are some things best left unwatched. Maybe. Uh, Number 54, 1971, The Cat of Nine uh, uh, Tales. I'm not familiar with that one. That sounds like something I probably would like. Probably. And because a lot of these are more psychological horror. 1979, The Brood. I hope we're not going to get into some of this stuff that I have never, ever seen. But apparently, we are going into some of this. And maybe it's some of them, I've probably seen them, and they just didn't impress me enough to remember them. See, that's usually what happens with me. It's like, you've watched this. Did I? Well, some things that you liked at the time, because if I were was there, 
you know. I have decorative coffee. You do? Mm-hmm. What is that? Th- mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like, it's a good movie. Okay, what what, what happened again? <laughs> so I'm just, we can skip through some of these. I mean, just quickly, 71 Doubters of Darkness. Um, 57 from 1970, Valerie and Her Weeks of Wonders. Huh? That what? sounds weird. Uh, some of these, I'm like, where the hell did they even get these? 58, 1978, Empire of Passion. That looks like a Japanese film. Pro- Maybe it is. Uh, Vampire Circus, 1972. At some point, I probably have seen that. Don't remember anything about it. <laughs> 76, Massacre at Central High. Are you familiar with any of these? I think I've heard of that one, but I don't remember. What was it? Revenge of the Nerds? But that wasn't from the 70s. No. That had, no, no. That was a totally different genre. 71 Twins of Evil. It was a horror movie, I think. 1979, The Visitor. Now, that one, I think that I have watched at some point and this and it's got this eyeball on the movie trailer or movie poster and it says an ancient intergalactic warrior arrives on earth to put a stop to a demonic child's plot to reproduce satan well, that's wonderful yeah uh, there's there's been a spate of ufo sightings in california by the way uh, not just apparently there was one in florida like a couple yeah, days ago. so we don't know. We may have Project Blue Beam incoming that's just thrown out there in the mix. It apparently crashed. Uh, yeah, you told me about that one, and and I ha- I couldn't find anything on I X couldn't find about Jack, it. I couldn't find jack shit about it hardly. Yeah, so that makes you wonder because if it had been something like that, it'd have been all over social media. Now, unless the, they try to wipe it, the UFO uh, things that's been all over X this morning. And it started last night. But why is it anything paranormal or supernatural? Always looks like it's shot on a potato. I think is that, it required? I think it's also due to electromagnetic frequencies, and that so it be. screws up with the technology. That very well could be. You may have solved that mystery. A very logical explanation. Number sixty-three. More things. I, we we should just entitle this nineteen seventies horror movies I've never heard of. <laughs> God told me to. Uh, seventy-seven. Rabid. Rabies. I've maybe, maybe. This this does seem interesting though. The synopsis is. Surgery leaves a Montreal motorcyclist with a blood-sucking appendage in her armpit. (laughs) Hmm. Oh, wait. Hmm. What year did Basket Case come out? I I don't know. See, I could see them doing something like that. I don't know where the hell they've got this one. 1978, I actually have heard of this one. The Fury. I've heard about it, never watched it. And this was the one about, I think it was the Twins... And seems like it almost, it was Brian De Palma. And I'm thinking it had, I mean, I, I did see it. I, it's way back there in, in the deep, dark, you know, cobwebs of my brain. It seems like it almost had a fire starter essence to it. Like the episode of X-Files, Firestarter? No, like the book by Stephen King, Firestarter. Oh, I never read it. Which was pyrokinetic. Oh. Uh. She could start fires with her brain. Okay. Her mind. Kind of like Carrie, with, where she could like move stuff and make stuff right. happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, so it's he a did. form of telekinesis. Right. I'm, I'm only, you know, pyromaniac. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was interesting. Fire! Fire! The the main thing on that movie was that her hair would sort of, you know, you were talking about electricity, and you know how with the different. I can't remember what the Tesla coils or whatever it was that the hair sort of raises off of the head. Mm -hmm. And in the movie, that kid, her, (coughs) bless, her um, hair would do that before she would do the throwing of the flames, starting the fires. That's cool. It was pretty cool. It was was an okay movie. But it seems like the Fury is somehow maybe in 
that, and I may be totally wrong. People be going to Orlando, honey. No, this one I have heard of, but I can't really remember it coming in at number sixty-six on this list. Nineteen seventy-six, Alice, Sweet Alice. That sounds like something you would watch. It depends. I've heard of that one, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, That's it said something that I'm going to have to check the out. The synopsis. Though. His favorite daughter, Karen, who was Brooke Shields, is viciously strangled and set afire in church on the day of her first communion. Well, well that's lovely. Th- th- yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. That's interesting. This one from this number 67, 1970, The Vampire Lovers. It seems like I have watched that at some point because it has Peter Cushing in it. Okay. And I think what it is, this list, because that they're including movies from other places and stuff, that's the reason that I may not have heard of a lot of them. Uh, 1968, uh, or 1968, no, number 68 from 1973, Schlock. I can make really rude jokes with that one. <sighs> Schlock? And it says that he, he oh. looks like... It looks like Sasquatch. It looks like Sasquatch. But it says that he wakes up after 20 million years and kills picnickers for their bananas. Loves it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Give him your bananas. Mm Mm-hmm. Basket Case came out in 1982, but it looked like it was shot uh, on a 70-something camera. That's so fine. I'm just going to this. consider... I'm just going to shoehorn that into the 70s. <laughs> we finally got one that I know of and know of well. This is coming in number 69. It's from 1979. Phantasm. Oh. oh. I've never watched it. Phantasm will mess you up. That's why I have never watched it because I it it looks like something that that would it turn, really make me go into crisis mode. It is the dude who played the mortician. All he had to do was just stand there. I mean, he just one of those people. But it had that silver ball that the spikes would come out. Yeah. There were three of them. And it would attack your face. Yes. And it it was. It was scary. Uh, Then we go back. Wasn't there a scene of a hallway where those things chased after Mm -hmm. a person? Uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. was, uh, The first time I saw it, it impressed me so much that it was years later before I dared watch it again. No. For real. It impressed me so much that it took years. <laughs> that means it scared the piss out of you. Yes. That means it was effective. That's the whole point of a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Number 70 on the list from 1972 is one called Images. Loves it. Don't know that one either. Uh, schizophrenic confuses her husband with her lovers and herself. What? I, no. No. No, no. And I'm one of these, I think that, like everything else, certain things should stay in their own lane. Like this one, 1971. Uh, 1971. From number 71. Number 71 from 1974. Black Christmas. I'm not a fan of Christmas horror movies. Mainly because there are children. <laughs> And yeah. for people who want to do different holiday traditions, don't ruin that for the kids. Well, some people... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, even if they see the movie trailers or something, like my thing with the Boggy Creek. Jack uh, Frost. That was a horror movie with Christmas theme. Yeah, I'm just I'm not a fan of that. No more than I like pastels and my Halloween. Uh, from 1978. Now, I did see this one. This one was interesting. What the Christmas horror movies are? No. What? What the Christmas horror movies are? That's the Halloween people getting revenge on the Christmas people Maybe. for invading. <laughs> yes, but don't. Yeah, just uh, let it go. No. Just let it go. No. 
they got they, they basically they got Christmas in July and are invading the whole damn year. No. Uh, anyhow, from 1978, Piranha. 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 I remember this one and the scene where this woman had her, she was sitting on a dock or something mm-hmm. and had her feet in the water. Yeah. And they ate her feet. Oh, yeah, they ate her feet. And it's like it has shown, you know, like the bones and the different things like that. Because oh, that's piranhas lovely. are crazy. Yeah, we watched a video about this one, this person like sticking some sort of meat into the thing. Yeah, and was the it was a skull. And, and that they had just picked it clean. Yep. And it's like, why why do those things exist? Why do they exist? Why do they exist? If something dies, they go eat it. Yeah, but uh, you know, I think it's crazy. Number 73, another one I have no idea about is from uh, 1975, which is Silo or the 120 Days of Sodom. Uh No. Just flat out, no. Never heard of that. Yeah. 1973, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Loves it. And I'm trying to, because there's been so many that have had a similar theme, I would have to go back and reacquaint That was the one with the with goblins. One. Was it? I'm pretty sure. Let me see. It's his sure. small yeah. creatures. Yeah. That's the, that I call them goblins. But yeah, they have freaky little shits and they there's been remakes of it too but this is what they looked like it's freaky little shits oh well i have to go back and we'll have to watch that sometime that looks interesting yeah Uh, and i remember the bathroom scene oh so you have watched this one i've watched clips of it i spent a lot of time watching clips of horror movies (laughs) rather than watching the whole thing 1972, what have they done to Solange? Knowles? I, I don't. Solange Knowles, I Beyonce's don't. sister? <sighs> I don't know. Now, this next one coming in at n- number 76 from 1979 is wondrous. Love at first bite. You have not seen this one, no, I don't I've think. Never this even has heard of it. George Hamilton in it, Susan St. James. And it's. A horror comedy. And it's really well done. I, it's been many, many years since I watched that, but I do remember that it was very enjoyable. But this was okay. vampires and, and comedy. Yeah, that doesn't look... It, and George Hamilton. It was cheesy as hell, but it was it was funny because George Hamilton, people, and at least he there for a while had a good sense of humor because he was another one that was perpetually tan uh-huh and so he's just a tan vampire well he was just as a human as a human but yeah. he, it was a good movie it was it doesn't uh, look like something though that i would be interested you in. actually you would like it because it is funny okay it's sort of like Shaun of the dead type funny Shaun okay. of the dead is yeah. awesome that Shaun is of one is of good. our favorite movies on that all right 1972 season of the witch season and of the witch. this was i can't remember if i have seen this one mm-hmm. but there was this mm-hmm. sort of revision of the occult and witchcraft and and not in a happy spoopy movie way but in a serious way during the 70s that is something that I did notice a lot of it. There was occult stuff everywhere in so many TV, movies, everywhere. Yeah. And I wonder how many people that it did encourage to get into the occult. You never know, but you don't know what these things do to people. No. Just by watching them. And and to go back and realize, and that was something, even on the movies with Vincent Price or any of those, if they start doing incantations and shit, I mute that. Yeah. Because a lot of those things were real. Yeah, and you don't want to bring that shit into the Nuh-uh. house. No, no. You have to have some sense on some of this stuff. I think you, you've talked about this one before. From 1973, The Crazies. Didn't I, you see that one somewhere? Hold up. Let me. And this was a George, George A. Romero. And it says... Um, 
I don't know if this was another one where everybody went insane or something like that. It appears to be like that. Uh, I have never seen this movie, actually. I said don't look in the... Be- in, don't look into th- into the basement. Don't look in the basement. Okay. So, which was the... Asylum was run by that one inmate mm-hmm. who pretended to be the doctor. This was convincingly. Something, this one has to do with somehow the town was infected. Yeah, I'd, I'd never seen that. So, anyhow, number 79 on their list from 1975. And I'm really surprised this only got, well, Rotten Tomatoes. You can't go by their tomato ratings. 68%. Again, 1975. The Stepford Wives. You know, I've never actually that watched the full movie. Is I've iconic. seen the clips. But yeah, it is a very <laughs> iconic movie. Mm-hmm. And and what, the Stepford Wives, and you've got to put some of these things into the context of society and, and the time and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And when the <clears throat> original feminist movement started, it was needed. Yeah. Because any of us who had ever been sexually harassed at work, that shit ain't cool. No. no. It ain't cool at all. But like many things, they keep pushing. And and the stuff that's going on today, it's like, no, y- y- y'all doing it wrong. People bring resentment. There's a difference between bringing awareness and, and change through awareness to sit there and go, no, that ain't cool, don't do that. And, and then trying to punish people that were not involved in wrongdoing. Right. That's a totally different thing. Mm-hmm. But as far as the Stepford Wives, them wanting that they were robots. Now, some men may want that, some men may not. It's a matter of... Well... I don't remember if this was the original or the remake. At the very end of it, I'm pretty sure it was the remake. Turns out all the women that were turned into robots was because of this one woman and her husband Mm -hmm. was a robot. And they were like, you're a lady? And she was like, I'm a lady. And the one lady was like, a real lady? It was, and she said, either fully or one hundred percent, something like that. Really, and it yeah. was a robot, huh? And it was a robot. No, this was the lady that was. She was like this big science person oh, who okay. made the ro- who made the whole town, the robots, okay. and all that. That that was something else. They had um, this about robots and stuff back in the seventies because that was becoming a thing Mm -hmm. and that fear of tech and a lot of times when people have societal fears and different things like that it comes out through some of the horror movie genres to deal with those fears yeah and it's interesting there is a psychology behind all these things a lot of times and some of it is just stupid it is and 1971 is the Velvet Vampire. Never heard of that one. No, no. I have to, some of these. This one Velvet is Crowbar. <laughs> 1977, The Hills Have Eyes. I love that. that movie. It's, again, feral, inbred humans. Who doesn't love a good movie about feral, inbred humans? <laughs> uh, if that's your taste, sure, go right ahead. <laughs> But it had the one gentleman who has the very characteristic look. And I can't remember if his name was, I can't remember if that was James Whitworth or not. Uh, This was a Wes Craven movie. And they say that the guy is just a sweetheart. He just looks spooky. Yeah. Well, that's usually how it goes. He's got some kind of condition. And I can't remember what the name of the condition was. Uh But he makes it work for him. And it was the whole basis of back in the day before the do-gooders shut down the freak shows, which allowed these people who had differences to be self-sufficient and support themselves. Hmm. And that you had these Karens, it's the same shit going on today. Oh, they're being exploited. 
Did you ask them their right. side of it? Did they ask you for help? Usually when when they're spewing this shit, they have never talked to a single one of them. Right. Right. So this man, because that he had this difference, like I said, he made it work for him. And people adore him. Mm-hmm. I would love to meet him. What yeah. a wonderful job he did in some of these horror movies. Mm-hmm. The damn good job. All right, 1972, Asylum. Have I seen that one? I think I have. Hold up. This Hold was up. the one. Let's see. I think we did watch this one. It had Peter Cushing in it. Like I said, there's so many of them that have similar themes. Yes, we've watched it. I'm pretty sure. Wait, have we? Have we? We probably did. We probably did. And it says the synopsis on this was that when Dr. Martin goes on a job interview at a British insane asylum, yes, we did watch it. He learns that he must interview the asylum's inmates in order to be considered for the position. And Dr. Rutherford, uh, who is wheelchair bound because of an assault by an inmate tells Dr. Martin that he will consider him for the position if he can discover which of the inmates is Dr. Starr, a former head doctor at the asylum who suffered a nervous breakdown. It was a really good movie. That sounds very similar to Don't Look in the Basement. Sort of, yes. I think it is along a similar line. Because that's basically kind of what happened, except dude wasn't in a wheelchair. He was. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, once you get a formula like that, it's it becomes predictable, and it's no longer fun. Yeah. You know, it's not something that, it's not a surprise, it's expected. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1972, The Asphyx. I never heard of that one. 19... Asphyx? <laughs> What? Mm, 1974, <laughs> Blood for Dracula. I, I've Never not that heard one. that one. This, I, I, the movie poster on it's great, but like I said, then 1974, this one, it's alive. It's alive. Uh, and that's another that one. one of those Which year did it that come will out? freak you out. 1974. It's a lot. I remember the movie trailers on that one. And when you've got that bassinet and that the cries coming from that bassinet, highly abnormal. Ew. Ew. Yeah. Everybody likes a good demonic baby movie. Never seen it. Never seen it. Uh, 1979, The Driller Killer. I've never heard of that one either. No. 75, Race with the Devil. Nope. Uh, 73, The Legend of Hell House. And I think that I have yeah, watched that I've one at some point. Uh huh. You know. It's kind of like a haunted house type thing. It said that the critics' consensus makes up for its. Uh, it said it makes up for its disappointing lack of outright scares with a top notch cast. In a suitably macabre atmosphere. I probably would like that. It has Roddy McDowell. We have watched it. Yeah. Because I was a fan of Roddy McDowell. Okay. Okay. He just very, again, very distinctive actor. Yeah. Was that the one where the screams were in the one room? Like Uh, it was trapped in the walls and then it took people? Maybe. Maybe. 1971 coming in at number 89 on the list, the Mephisto, Mephisto Waltz, a frustrated pianist, music journalist, uh, is thrilled to interview a virtuoso. I feel like we're starting to hit the bottom of the barrel. I think we are. I think we are. The why didn't there's some other ones that were really good. 73 Tenderness of the Wolves. Uh, no. What? No. No. 1971, Four Flies on Grey Velvet. That sounds pretentious just by the name. Yeah. That doesn't... Okay. 
1972, Last House on the Left. Seems like I have heard of that one. This was a West West Craven. How about we make a horror movie that's that's a, both a slasher but paranormal thing as well, and just call it Slasher? I'm sure that somebody's. That's done just that. it. It's it's at, advertised as is. There you go. It's a slasher film. <laughs> slasher. There you go. Uh, seventy-eight Giles two. No. No. Seventy-four. The cars that ate Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard about that, but that's funny. No. It's like this one was good. And they panned it on here. But this well, and I know why they did do this, because I don't know whether the other one nineteen seventy two is Ben, which was the sequel to Willard. Never seen Willard was the one where the kid befriended the rats. I never seen either of those. And Ben was his favorite rat. And so he would sick the rats on people. And the rats would consume the people. Oh. Oh. I don't know that there's been another movie similar to that. Probably not. But it was yeah. It was worth, that one's worth watching. 77, we're almost finished. Number 96, 1977, Demon Seed. Never heard of it. They've got this one. uh, This next one is one of my favorites. It's coming in at number 97 from 1979. And this is one of my favorite versions of Dracula because it has Franklin Jello in it. Jello? It is elegant. It is classic goth. It is beautiful. It's a good rendition well, of Dracula. Well, Frank Franklin Jello, you did good. <laughs> yes. I mean, it like I said, it's elegant. It really, really is. So mm. go back and watch that. This one didn't. He did not get enough credit. But if you look at him, there's he does this fucked up thing with his eyes that his eyes almost like pulsate. Pulsate or just shake? It's weird. It's weird. And I didn't notice it for years. And it's like, is that some kind of condition or is he doing that on purpose? (laughs) You never know. You You never know. You don't. But this is quality. I don't know. Like I said, they're getting some of this. 98 from 1973 Lisa and the Devil have no idea it had Elkie Summer my god I haven't heard of Elkie Summer's name in many years and it had Telly Savalas Telly Savalas in a horror flick I don't have to go and look for that Telly Savalas played a character the character of Kojak okay who was a bald gritty detective and he always had a lollipop Okay. Because he had tried to quit smoking or whatever. Uh huh. Telly Savalas made it cool to be bald. Did he? He did. Did he? He did. Bald works for a lot of people. It does. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yul Brenner back in the day, as far as the bald. So, men, don't worry about the hair so much. Oh. It's not necessary. Some, uh, <laughs> some people that lose their hair do not look good bald. Yeah, it can work for them. Number 99 from 1977, one called Ruby. I have no idea. I've actually sort of heard of that one, have but you? I cannot tell you what it what it was about. And the last one, the number 100 on this list, at least I have heard of this one, 1972, Dr. Fibes Rises Again. This was Vincent Price, and this is another one. It's good. The way that he gets revenge on people is twisted. Okay. Okay. It's, but it's, yeah. It was good, though. Yeah. When it's revenge, and it's creative, and it was very much warranted, I think that can be cathartic. Yeah. Yeah. It certainly can be. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So Kia. I've never heard of. Yeah, we did this. This last half the list that was half of these I've never heard of. Right. And I'm like, I don't know that whoever compiled that list was, you know, knew. Did they know what they were talking about? Unless they're one of these horror hosts that have to sit there and and weed through the video, weed through movies to figure out what to watch. Sure, I'm, maybe. I'm sure that there were different ones that needed to be on there. Have you ever watched Doctor Wolfula? No. He's a horror reviewer on YouTube. Okay. He's got this plastic wolf mask with one eye. God. One of the ones that should have been on this list that is a damn good scary movie from 1976 is Burnt Offerings. That movie is so good that did have Karen Black in it. Oh, is this an underrated movie list or? No, it wasn't supposed to be. It had Betty Davis in it. And what it was, this house would basically come back to life. Okay. And it is scary. And that's another one. You had this dude that was the hearse driver. Uh-huh. That uh, Betty Davis's character, this, he appeared to her. He was just standing there in the doorway. That's all he had to do was to stand there. And you talk about a creepy-ass smile. And then that, and then that coffin rolled in front of her, whatever it was. Uh-huh. Yeah. Burnt uh-huh. offerings. That is a damn good, that's, that should have been included on that list. Yeah. Never. S- I can't really, believe I've never actually watched that movie either, you though. You have. You have. You sat here and watched it with me. I was here. Mama, I was here. if it did not impress me, it did not sink in. It was here. It's like, what happens is I can show him a few clips and he's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he adores Betty Davis. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you were more of more camp Joan Collins, weren't you? Joan Collins? Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford, my bad. Joan Collins was back in, during the day. I was thinking of her. She did a lot of the horror flicks, the, some of the ones in the UK, too. Yeah. No, I'm a fan of Joan Crawford's... Uh movie work but like as far as actual acting goes i do prefer betty davis's style Mm -hmm. of acting but like i said in burnt offerings i think that was that may have been her final role maybe because she was she was up there in age when she did that Mm -hmm. and that in the movie she had had a stroke and her acting that out, it's creepy as hell. It's creepy as hell on multiple levels. Did she die from the stroke in the movie? No. That made it worse. Oh, God. That made it worse. So, let us know. This list was very anticlimactic, and I'm sorry because I should have read through it, but I did promise in the previous cup that we'd finish the list. I know that you all know of 70s horror movies that were really good. And as far as the critics, fuck the critics. It, once again. Most of them don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. Whether or not a movie is good and you should like it or not, that is fully subjective. That is your taste mm-hmm. alone. That is, yeah. I think that on this list, that whoever whoever the dude, whoever it was that made the list, didn't know what they were doing. I, I think tell that's you. highly possible on that. That's why I don't really go by Rotten Tomatoes I don't or either. any sort of this critic website. Have, this is why that they have gotten, uh, that the website has gotten panned over the years. Yeah. But it was just um, from their staff or whatever. It's an editorial. <sighs> they didn't even include who it was that had compiled the list. Of course they didn't. that. Oh. oh, Alex Vo, I think is what it is. Who? Alex Vo. He's a foe. Let's see how old Alex is. Well, hell, he looks like he's 12. No wonder he doesn't n- understand or know these movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> Loves it. Loves it. 
anyhow, just things for people to have fun with, consider. And it's like, I will tell you what I did notice on this list, on some of them. Hmm. It was almost like a DEI list. It's like, don't put that shit in my horror movies. Don't put that shit near me. If it's a good movie, it should stand on its own. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like, how many movies have we seen as far as the Japanese horror movies? Oh, my God. They they do horror in a totally different way. They do, but it is very effective. Very. It's like, it will... The Ring and and The Grudge and stuff like that. Oh, I mean, it... Did that just, shit actually affect you when you yes, watched Yes, The Ring did. When Which version did you watch? Did you watch the Japanese version or the American Japanese version? I don't know, but I know that, that where that individual was in the closet, uh-huh. it was somewhere near that. Scared the shit out of me for whatever reason. And, and different people... Horror affects them differently due to their makeup Mm -hmm. and their life experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you for a fact, even though it was the American version, the grudge one Mm -hmm. and two, I never got to see three, sadly. Those movies terrified the shit out of me Mm -hmm. when I first started watching them. And it's like, Kid and I will go through phases where we'll sit and we'll read a movie. It doesn't bother us to have subtitles. I mean, we'll sit there and I, there's been several of the, of the Japanese movies that we have watched and enjoyed. There was a Russian vampire movie that we watched at one point, and it was really good also. And I never could find it again. Never did remember the name of it. Hmm. Hmm. But it was good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I don't... It's, good movies. A movie's either good or it's not. Yeah. You don't have to try to force people. It's like the Emperor's New Clothes to sit there and go, Oh, this is wondrous because... No. No. (laughs) It is either effective or it's not. You can tell aspects of it that you personally liked and all that, but as far as being like, you will like this too. You don't know that. Right. It's subjective, once again. It is. Whether or not a movie is good to a person is subjective. And to try to force somebody's views of society as far as whether you like a, you know, a video, a movie, a video game, anything like that, that's insane. Mm -hmm. At some point, people will make horror movies about this point in history. Yeah. Then we live through it. Yeah. So, final thoughts. Watch what you want to watch. Yeah. Like I said, if you remember movies that are good, we'll make our own list. Uh-huh. We will make our own list. So, if you've had experiences with paranormal or supernatural, encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, tinfoil hats. Yes. Yeah, you can put all that stuff in the comment section. That or you can send me an email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com. That's there in the description box. Loves it. If you want it, but if you like this video... Check her out on BitChute, Rumble, YouTube, at Rolanda's Cup of Coffee with Scream. Also check her out on X, previously known as Twitter, at Rolanda C-O-C-W-S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking of these critics. Instead of just sitting there and watching a movie, can you imagine sitting there and just waiting to pick it apart? That seems like a miserable time. You can't enjoy the movie that way. Those are the people that are kind of insufferable. Yes. Because they're usually up their own asses. Yeah. I try to avoid people like that. Anyhow, know that you are very loved. Treat other people the way that you would like to be treated. And Lord willing, we'll see you on the next cut. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.